Okay, everyone, I'm here with my Kingsong S22. And the purpose of this video is to just show you how I'm installing the new suspension rods or the rollers that go that someone had uh, made for the suspension on the S22. As most all of us know, the S22 comes with a flawed system. It works great for about the first 15 miles, and then after that, it starts making a lot of noise, getting hung up. If you get any debris inside the suspension at all, it becomes very frustrating over time. You find yourself looking for all different kinds of oils, and that'll last for about five to 10 miles before it starts squeaking again. So I know it won't be perfect, but at least I hope that it will give me a little bit more free flowing suspension, and then we can just tweak it as we go. I would say I have about 350 miles on it. And the first 20 miles I had on the wheel went really well. But after that, I started getting the typical screeching from the stock suspension. From the very beginning, even before I even received the, the wheel, I knew that the design of the suspension was going to be a problem. I thought, one thing that they could do is put little rollers on there. I had the bearing idea from the very beginning. I thought that was a wonderful idea. And apparently someone else who has some skills in 3D printing, whoever that was, I'll post it up on the screen. They had the skill to make the very design that I had from the very beginning. I thought two rollers on each side would work really good. So I downloaded all of the pieces, consist of, I guess, this main bar, the slider. It doesn't come with bearings, obviously. You can't print out the bearings, but it tells you exactly which bearing to purchase. So I purchased those on Amazon. Pretty awesome. They have designed a, an outer wheel that goes over the bearing. Now, the print of it may not be perfect as I'm pressing the bearing down into it. And then what I do is I'll take this piece of sandpaper and I just, I rub, I run the wheel filling each side of it with my fingers. Most of them have been really good as far as the roundness. There's not really been any high spots on, on my prints, but I've had a couple of wheels where the sides would come out just a little bit. So I'm thinking that I need to remove any type of, and see there's a high side right there. I need to re remove any type of high sides on, on the sides. So, I just use, just it doesn't take a lot. I think this is like 180 grit sandpaper. Once I get it smooth where it goes across the top of the sandpaper smoothly on the, on the top and the sides, then what I'll do, I will press them down the same on each one. So in other words, the way these were printed is it has an entry side and then a side with a little bit larger lip on the other side. And you may have seen me use my socket. This is like a nine millimeter socket. It seems to fit pretty good. But I've been placing these the same way. So the long slotted side down first. And I noticed through doing these that you can go too far. If you press it down too far, then it will start rubbing against this side. If you don't go far enough, then when you put the plate over the top, then it's going to rub on this side. So it's very tight tolerances in here for what it is. These are my last two. It took me a while to figure out how to punch these, that, that first punch. Again, it was really good design because there's, a, there's an inner lip on both sides, basically. So you basically have to press it down all the way in there. And this one's actually perfect. This one is a really good print. And I probably shouldn't do anything to this, but there is one side that's got just a little high side, just a little bit. And I just want it to run as smooth in there as I possibly can. So I'll take just a little bit of extra time and kind of flatten it out just, just a little bit. Don't want to go too far. And this is my last one to press in. So hopefully, I won't mess it up at this point. That went in really easy. All right, and then the final piece for the construction of this are these outside plates. So if you printed it out correctly, 
you have to invert some of them. So, and then these pieces, you have to invert those. You have to kind of think about it, uh, making sure that you print the proper ones. Now, I'm not really sure at this point exactly how this is going to, I don't know if that's necessary, but I just want to press that in as far as possible. Make sure that this is flat as possible so it doesn't rub on the inside. So there you have it. I've got all four pieces ready to go. I'm sure I'm going to need to take my sandpaper and I'm not sure how this is going to fit into the wheel, but I need to go take apart my wheel, take the old suspension out and then screw this onto the bracing on the inside of the suspension. I have been dreading this process quite a bit because in order to get to the suspension, you basically have to take the entire wheel apart. And in order to take the wheel apart, you got to take the top off. It's just quite the process. So I haven't been looking forward to this, but maybe I can just do a time lapse and get to the meat of the problem that we're going to try to solve. As you can see here, I just got the wheel off. And these things here, these little rubber pieces that are supposed to go on the top and bottom of each slider, the purpose of it is to remove any dirt or anything that may fall into the slider, but they don't work very well. As a matter of fact, I've had two of them break. One of them broke when I was trying to put the wheel back together last time I took it apart and the other one obviously broke during riding. So these are not very robust in any way whatsoever. You can also see how much oil I have put on the wheel. I mean I really saturated it with all kinds of grease and oil. I thought I did a really good job but it still just remains gritty and you can see that while I put the oil on there, it will drip out onto the tire and it just makes a mess. So hopefully this new system is going to alleviate all of this, but it, right now it's a complete mess that I have to take apart. At this point, I've got the wheel off. I got the first set of sliders taken off. I'm, I haven't cleaned them up. I don't know that I will just yet. So what I've been trying to do is just use WD-40, just wipe it down on the inside. I cut a little few pieces, ran through the sliders as much as I could. In doing so, I noticed something very interesting. At the very bottom, there's so much friction on the inside of this slider that it has literally removed the paint. So there's an enormous amount of friction inside these sliders that we need to remove. Now, the next step is to look at the, the 3D printed sliders that I have printed out. Need to make sure that the 3D printed sliders are going to fit. And if not, then I'll need to make some sanding and, and things of that nature. So each one of these has a, an arrow on it that goes to the front. So this should be how it fits in there. And this is not a good sign from the very beginning. It seems too big. Okay, so already right off the bat, looks like I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of sanding to see where the material needs to come off. So let's check that out. Okay, I've learned that when we print these out, it's not perfect. And I think every print is gonna have its own unique problems. For me, I had a little lip on the print. And so when I went to put it in, I couldn't even get the slider to go into the slot. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using a file with a straight edge on it and some 180 grit sandpaper. I'm just grinding down in the areas which I could see for sure where there's a lip. And then as I got it to fit, I would 
push it in and out and see where it's rubbing the most and then just sand in that area. The tolerances are really tight, which is a good thing because you can't add material once it's printed, but you can take material off. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that this was too tight to get in. Another thing is these plates that go over the top, they're gonna to be screwed onto the wheel eventually. So that's gonna actually press it in just a little bit more, but I don't wanna rely on that. I would rather have a semi-loose condition. If you press down too much, it's actually gonna squeeze the wheel and I don't want that at all. So what I'm doing is I'm just sanding the top off, even the tops of the plate. So there's been a lot of material that has come off. And I'm, I'm getting there. I'm just not where I want to be. There's still a little bit too much friction. And right now I've only done one side of one of four sliders. It's a very time consuming process, but I don't want to halfway do it because if it does not create a better suspension, then all of this was a waste of time. So I'm going to continue to take a little bit more material off. And this seems to be where all of the friction is coming from right now. And it's getting there. It's just, I want it to be so smooth. You can just barely use your hand to push it in and out. I learned a lot. So I just finished a whole lot of sanding. I probably was sanding for about an hour and a half. As with any project, it seems, you know, you start off really shy and then you end up on the last one very aggressive and you've learned throughout the process exactly where to start and how to make the most progress and work most efficiently. So I think I've got them all ready to go with reasonable sliding. So as I was sanding, I found the exact positions that was hanging up the most, and usually it was right on the lip. And so just starting right off the bat, I would, I would grind all of these down, even before I started trying to fit it in there. Every single one of them needed to be ground down just a little bit or, or sanded just a little bit. Anyway, the good news is this. I think the longer I use these sliders, then the part that is using this still creating a little bit of friction will wear off. You know, the material may not be as hard as say a metal piece of material. So the, the friction sections will only wear more and more and get better and better, or they won't stick as much. And then the rollers will not wear, I don't believe they will wear as much. Even if it's a little stiff at first, I think it's only gonna get better in time. I finished with all four of my sliders. So now I've just got to put these on the plates of the wheel and clean everything up and try to put it back together. One thing you must do is when you're putting the sliders back on the brace, the very first one I did, I tightened it down too tight. And what it did is it basically crushed this little section right here. The, um, the screw went all the way through the outside plate and now these things don't spin freely simply because the inside was pressed out. So this is my only slider that I have. So what I'm going to have to do is try to salvage this by somehow getting a, a razor blade or something in there, to maybe kind of stop that from squeezing out. I have to wallow that out just a little bit. The tightening of this is going to be a little tricky. And what I don't have is the blue Loctite. I have green Loctite, which I believe is too heavy duty for this application. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put these on. You cannot tighten down on this material. 
or it will squeeze everything out and you'll have to start all over again. Okay, so I've got the wheel back together. I got really excited when I finally got the wheel to slide on the top part. I could feel just how easy it's, it was sliding and I got really excited. It made all the difference in the world. I just got through with about a two mile uh, ride around the neighborhood and jumping off of curbs, the little bumps on the sidewalks that you feel that before it was a little jarring, wasn't too bad, but before most of those bumps were being taken up from the tire. But now it's clear that the shock is actually doing the work on the smaller bumps. Made all the difference in the world. So one thing that I wanted to mention as well is now the rebound is much faster. I had everything turned all the way down because there's no, less friction in the suspension system now. I think I'm going to have to actually adjust my rebound dampening because the, the system is now working, I think, as it was intended to do. So I'm super happy about this project. I know that the more I ride this, the better they're going to get because the, like I said, the friction parts are going to start wearing down and just rely upon those bearings that are in, inside the sliders. Uh, to do its work. And I think it's going to be great. Uh, the only question that I have right now is how long will it last? So, if it wears down too much and starts getting really loose or maybe they break over time, uh, we'll see. But the great news is, is that now that I've done it and I know exactly, you know, the process, it took a long time to do this the first time, but next time if I need to replace anything in there, I've got the bearings, all I have to do is print off another slider and I know exactly how to set it up to get it rolling again. So hope you enjoyed. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of writing video from which will be tomorrow. <laughs>